SEA's best major, major, major placement was that Fnatic at TI6. They was it like top four? Top three, I think. Top three, okay. If I'm not Either mistaken. Way, yeah, SEA very hungry for it's a about tournament time. victory or even just a grand final appearance. And we are underway now. Smoke's on both sides. Let's talk about the lineups because Jenkins uh, brought it up. So did the panel. Yep. This Med I was convinced Medusa would be off lane, which I guess either way, it's counter, right? It's it's a pretty counter Medusa, but this is another thing where I think the Pango line and Beastmaster come through pretty nicely. So line is going to counteract the SD counter a little bit because you can just zap away the illusion slater with Hex and also the sharp mana drain. You have Pango to help out with the team fight and Beastmaster, of course, to try and help Mickey like through this mid game timing. But Talon have played this anti mage versus Medusa <laughs> countless times, maybe even the most out of any team. Yeah. So these early laning stages for both side lanes in both lineups is like incredibly crucial. So we should, met, like, let's talk about the anti-mage because it's only been played once in the entire tournament, which is a little bit surprising to me because this was yeah. like the counter to Medusa when she was beyond broken. Yeah. Now she's just broken. Kind of broken. Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, being able to first do that and then ban out whatever the hell you want to protect your lanes. We'll see how this works out for Jabs and company, but you're right. It, it does feel like does feel like it's going to be a tough Medusa game. It is just like the the nature of the longer tournaments go. Like even yesterday, we saw Spirit open up like Faces Void on six seven as well, where Medusa was not really picked on first pick or six seven like this. But Liquid going through this game with a strategy, as Talon will get to bust out the first offlane anti mage against Medusa. Last time this hero won, it was played. Uh, there's scary. three members of Talon here trying to get a first blood situation. Oh. Insania does not quite get blocked by the disruption. Good attempt from Talon to go through the gate to be able to reconnect with the lanes properly. As Insania has to fight through images of himself, but we'll live through the day. So, okay, l again, back to the anti-mage. Yeah. Because it is the, the cool here. I cannot believe I'm calling anti-mage cool. Offlane anti-mage is cool. Yeah. You don't have to feel bad saying it. Do you buy diffusal? Because that was a thing for a while. You can. Like you, you that, so you're gonna go for like some Wraith Band Vanguard and then you kind of go from there. You check if you go Treads Manta, or maybe you want to go Treads Diffusal if you want to go for some crazy good mid-game timing. But I do think that Liquid were aware that this AM can come out because AM's first few minutes of the laning stage is incredibly important, and I think that's also a big reason why they cover it with this Elder Titan. Right. You have ET, of course, always going up in popularity the deeper you get into tournaments because he just gives you so much space and Roche control and just massive team fight. And of course, dissuades the other team from picking Agi heroes in a lot of cases. Yep. We will be seeing the Monkey King, of course, from 23 Savage. But yeah, we'll see how the laning stage goes for each respective team. Because I mean, do you think one team or the other needs to get off to a better start? Or do you think the drafts are close enough that it's not as crucial? They're pretty close. and. It is important for both teams to have a good start, but it's more like if one team has like one very decisive side lane, like I would say if this anti-mage dumps on this Medusa down bottom, Talon are in an incredibly good spot. And what Liquid need to try to have happen for them is that bottom lane goes like somewhat even or maybe they win it. But the one I'm looking at is Zion as Beastmaster. Like this hero in your early and mid game, he is going to be your carry if he has a good early game because he will help you with all the towers, help you push the game forward, help you take Roche. All right, it's 23. Wanted to go on Boxy, but Boxy Brian. felt it inside him. Yeah, the boar is dead. Mr. Brian has died. Pet number one, I believe. As I'm seeing a lot of default couriers in such a prestigious tournament deep inside. And you know, all these players have a lot of money. Mm. Makes the question, why have they not purchased any cosmetics for these couriers? Yeah, maybe then they wouldn't kill them so often. That's true. They would they care more about it. The little babies. That's Makoto. Haven't really talked about this lane, but the Wind Ranger versus Nisha on the Pango. And relatively even right now, 12 and 5 to the 11 and 2. I do think, okay, let's say if you were in, if you were the captain of this team or the okay. coach for Talon, would you buy Diffusal on AM and Wind Ranger or no. neither or one of? If you buy it on any, it's like your monkey and AM. But I think one of them is enough. I don't think you need it on Makoto. Three Diffusals. You don't need to buy the few. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy four if you want. I do like you want a bit more lockdown. You want this Atos, Blapnir, so maybe some mid game BKB as well on your Wind Ranger to kind of just keep it going. Where also, one thing I need to mention is Makoto in the matches yesterday and maybe all the last matches before as well, he's been popping off.
like multiple 10-0, 8-0 games. So I'm also looking at him to maybe, you know, try and push forward. Yeah, he's been destroying. And you can see Q. This is another pseudo counter to the Medusa. Maybe not so much at the moment because the illusions are not super powerful. But the more stat items you buy, the more powerful those illusions will become inevitably. Yep. And you kind of can't. I mean, there used to be an old strat where you would just not buy stat items. <laughs> You'd buy just right clicky, uh, BKB type things. I don't. I mean, we kind of see that a bit from Go Medusa. Go buy rapiers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the fact that you get the mana shield inherently now yeah. makes it a lot different, I feel like. I mean, they did kind of look at it with the covering of Boxy. I think it's going to be his job later to make sure that Mika just doesn't get destroyed by these illusions. Because I would say all six cores in this game are pretty happy. Like, when you are playing this anti mage you want to get to this Ring of Health into a slightly earlier Vanguard. And yeah, just every single core kind of getting what they want here. And if you're from Talon's perspective, obviously they did play against Liquid the other day, and it was... I know it's been talked about to death how that transpired. Do you think that this experience is going to help them in this best of three? Because so far, in the two best of threes they played since, they have crushed. It, like, it has not really been that close. I feel like it can only help them, especially after they played well, after what happened to them. I think it only made this team stronger, like some anime power, as I've never seen this. Insania spawned his spirit and ran it through the Twin Gate, and now it's coming from top back to bottom. Yeah. I thought we saw that this tournament. We did? Yeah. Well, I didn't. That's some nerdy stuff. I love it. Yeah, he's going to get a ton of damage. Of course, he can only do it so often. He also you want to line it up with the creeps as well. Yeah. He did spot out Ollie, who's making a nice move down bottom. Of course, the... 84 damage, good. The five-minute moves with the Siege Creep. It's also nighttime. You've got the Blood Grenades going as even 23 Savage. We've got the whole family down here. Yeah. Unfortunately for Insania, not able to actually utilize that extra massive damage. So Talon wasting a bit of time trying to chase him out. This is definitely very good for Talon. Like, if you have a small opportunity down here where Jams gets to farm more than Mickey, or like he gets to speed up his Vanguard, like once you have it, you can slowly bust out this Medusa out of the lane, and you can already see Mickey. He's kind of going back and forth. Six-minute rune. Oh. Nisha is going to use his ult to secure the arcane. Well worth it. Pretty damn good for him as he gets the arcane rune. So he's just going to be chilling a little bit. And I would say Zai as well. We saw this yesterday. Or let's see. Helm of Iron stacks World. are up along with the tombstone. Blood Grenade used as well as Boxy TPs in to control 23 Savage. So not really a very good attempt here from Talon. I mean, the Helm of Iron World is early on. It just does a lot for Beastmaster. It like more than doubles your armor as well. So Zai going to be A-OK -okay up here. Nisha probably going to be waiting for his next ult with the arcane rune. And that was one of these first tier one towers. Like, this is another reason why Pango is so great with these summon heroes. You can easily rotate up top and maybe help Nisha take this talent tier one safe lane tower later. Yep. As the seven minute wisdom runes are about to spawn. And ooh, Insania trying to go for a steal. There's a disruption, of course. Yeah. Lots couple, of TPs. Couple TPs. So Insania is spotted, won't even try to, won't bother trying to get that wisdom rune. He's going to get surrounded. Echo Stomp coming, but canceled by 23 Savage. So making the rotation over. First blood. Seven minutes. First blood. I actually forgot that you could kill people in Dota <laughs> until now. But I think this is something that we do see in these like extremely important games. Yeah. Teams are just a little bit more passive early on. That's 23 with a nice TP. I wasn't too sure if that was going to be worth it, but does get himself the first blood. Of course, this does open up the top lane a little bit for Zai, which we touched on earlier. But he's been having a phenomenal tournament and Beastmaster. If this hero gets off to a good start, he is scary. And you can see the wraparound here. Mickey might be in some trouble. Oh. Scan connects Jabs. at the very end. Yeah, true. And you can see the rest of Liquid now on the way. This might actually turn into a little mini fight. Smoke from Insani on the backside. Q will end up popping and get some vision now. It is nighttime. As a lot of damage being applied to Mickey, a lot of mana drain oh, as well. But roll. Nisha coming in with the rolling thunder. Echo stomp and Ooh. now the save Good from Q. And Jabs will be able to blink away. They will be able to kill the tombstone. Stapler. And Q will go down to the briefcase, man. It's all business here for Insania. They bring a lot of heroes down here. So they only get the one kill. And Talon get nothing out of it. It's honestly good. Ooh, 23. Oh, I may have spoken too early. 23 Savage getting control. Boxy's going to die. 
Focus fire onto Nisha as Ollie making Swatch his transition over as well. Swatch to the other side, but they find the vision, and Makoto's focus fire continuing on. 23 Savage, pretty low, but he gets off the Wukong's command, and Nisha does drop with the help of the power shot. And now Insania looks to be next. Manavoy doing exactly zero damage, it looked like, as the double kill comes out for Makoto. Big moves by Talon here. It looked like Liquid were going to have a great smoke down bottom, right, to help defend the tower. Well, you have Zai pushing up the top lane. It's level Makoto. one, level one Manavoy is one of just, just an awful spell. Yeah, it's Truly pretty... It's, it's pretty awkward, right? If you get it on the Medusa later without the mana, that's pretty good. But I love how Talon are playing, like this fast pace kind of tempo. I feel like in the last few days, we've seen a bit of a, a switcheroo when it comes to the early game. Lots of twin gates, even from like just your carries. As both these teams, they play a lot of Monkey King. They know what's up. Yeah, and it's it's kind of cool to see that, I mean, this patch has been out for quite a while in terms of not, not, not like the letter patch, but the big patch, mm. the new journey patch or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> Uh, because the, right the gates haven't been changed really yeah. at all. And we're still seeing teams adjust and create new strategies around it. As it looks like both tier ones will be traded. On the top and bottom respectively. Oh, Talon off to a good start. Do have the net worth lead and Jabs off to a very, very good start. Of course, we've mentioned he's got the Vanguard. Getting closer to Treads. I don't know if they're coming or if he's close to them, but either way, like Medusa being kicked out of the lane earlier now than perhaps usual, with on top of the nerfs, like now your split shot is only level two. So Mickey is going to have to kind of screw off into the top area of the map. So say he's too unhappy, but still hurts this game a bit. When you pick an offlane anti-mage, and we yeah. kind of see this with maybe Axe being the most comparable example, well, maybe not even that, because Axe is at least is an, an initiator. You don't really have an aura builder, you don't have an initiator. Like, is that... You can see a roar come out onto the other side of the map. Kill. Looks like Q will take a tumble. But could you look at that as a negative aspect of the lineup that Liquid can try to take advantage of? Well, kind of, but the thing is, he's still kind of owning one of the win conditions from the Radiant team, and even though you don't have auras, Anti-Mage, if played very well from the offlane role, he's still kind of a tanky hero that can go in first. He doesn't give you the lockdown, but he gives you the body. Because he has the magic resistance, the vanguard. And I'm, I mean, this is where Liquid will have to push forward later with the Beast and Medusa. Like, I think their minute 20 to 25 will be stronger than Talon, even if they're slightly behind. There's a Helmadom onto Zai, of course, going for the eventual Overlord. And he's having a very good game, like he talked about. It's important yeah. for Liquid that he does so. Top two net worth right now. And I think that Talon know this, which is why they want to smoke up there. I do think that Boxy was kind of pinging it out, as currently he's trying to pull the lane back to give Zai a better position, then maybe also break the smoke. I mean, at least for now, Liquid are reading this move. Like, they know. You need to destroy or try to slow down this Beastmaster from minute 10 to 15. So good job from Liquid reading the smoke. Indeed. Atos now picked up by Makoto, and that's exactly what that smoke was designed to do, is find somebody in kind of reveal the new item from him. It's been a very popular item on a lot of mid-heroes. He's just so good on his By a lot, I mean heroes. Windrunner and Snapfire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess Meepo. Yeah, true, true. Even, don't know what happened to that hero, but he certainly died off a little bit. Yeah, it felt like he was having a lot of success early in the tournament, and then... He was the talk of the town, so and then much. he just kept getting dunked on. Yeah. It's funny because they just keep adding new things for that hero to be able to survive. <laughs> it's apparently not Still too hard. Still. Yeah. Mm, oh. Game slowing down a little bit in terms of pace here as the active rune will come out once more, of course. Minute 12 here. Make sure it's a little late on this. Even 23 Regen is here. rune for Makoto. Still has the shield rune activated. Very <laughs> slow paced game to start. Liquid are fairly happy with the state of the game. I think if it doesn't like go more out of control in terms of the net worth, if they can get more levels and you get to the Helm of Overlord, you get to the Diffusal Blade timing and you kind of try to force a Roshan fight before Talon gets some of their core item timings, I think they'll be pretty happy. Even with a slight net worth deficit, your tempo and pace later is going to be really strong. And then for Talon, what's... What's their game plan? Are they waiting for... I'm assuming some BKBs are on the way, or at least trying to be developed here. I mean, they're still quite far away from some of those. I would say when you play the offlane AM like this, you're looking for more skirmishy fights, like 2v2s and kind of 3v3s. Three, Maybe around this nighttime, you can look to make another one of these smokes with Makoto. Maybe you get the AM in there and you try to invade somewhere. 
but I don't really think they're necessarily on a big ass timer themselves on Talon. It's just more about making sure you get the most out of the map since Liquid are kind of just doing the same. And from Talon, it actually, BKB is a bit of an awkward item because there's Roar, there's Stone yeah. Gaze, there's Earth Splitter. Like, but you kind of have to get it against a Lion and Pango. I think down in a pro oh, there's the smoke that we touched on. They did also bring jabs into this one, so I do like it. He's also drawing out that if there's a fight, maybe you guys should come over with Monkey and SD. Yep, Zai, I believe he's spotted. The boars reveal themselves, but they find the Elder Titan first. Tombstone. Shackle into the focus fire. Tombstone placed as well. It's going to be an easy pick off onto the support. Obviously, they'd rather have gotten Zai. So I think Liquid, not too sad about that happening. Uh, b both teams pretty happy with that. You get to use your heroes with talent, your Atos, you get some, you get a kill, you get some experience, but at the same time, Liquid, get to protect the king of the game right now, which is Zai on his Beastmaster. Triple stack Ancients. So, I mean, we said it in the laning stage, but even now, all six cores are incredibly happy in this game. There's only 500 difference between number one and number six. How often do we say that? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Barely ever, I think. Both teams seem to be okay with just trading. Just farm. Okay, you farm here, I'll farm there. We'll we'll do a gank occasionally to kill a support, but everybody else is very happy. Yeah, like here it's more about, so both teams are fairly happy with the state of the game, but it's gonna be on Liquid within like the next four or five minutes, or in rather like three, four, five minutes to speed it up and really like just pressure up the pace of the game. We're gonna have a smoke from Liquid onto two members. It's gonna be, I believe, the Diffusal Reveal. Yeah, and the Haste Rune as well on the Nisha Man, who's queuing up a Blink next. I do like that. You wanna have the counter team fight around the game. Into all these illusions, the Monkey King, the Anti Mage. Man, both teams so good at knowing when these smokes are, are out. I guess if you're Jabs here, you probably just go. Manta style. Like, maybe you just make sure that you can continue to play the map here if you're talent, and I think you just try to go for the scale. If you, let's say you all in some Diffuser Blade, I could see that idea as well uh, from Jams, but then it kind of means that they're going to be looking to fight in the next couple minutes, and I don't know if that's going to be that easy here into this Liquid Draft. We might finally have a push here onto the Tier 1 mid as Liquid have the Helm of Dom creep. Or is that an Overlord? already. I think that's Dom. He's close to the Overlord as Liquid. We, we've seen this plenty of times now, kind of around the time where you would like to go Roche. You try to take the enemy safe in tower, you try to take the enemy mid tier one. Now they can slowly rotate back up top as it is nighttime. Roshan is up here. You missed one objective when you said all that. What did I? Tormentor? That's right. <laughs> yeah, 50 minute Tormentor, guys. Four minutes away. It's Torment time. Uh, Manta is picked up now by Mickey. So Echo Maelstrom is going to be the choice here by 23. It's going to help you play the map and help you with some of the scaling as well. Jams did queue up the Manta style, does now have the Yasha, so... It is, I would say it is quite clear how Talon will want to play this game. You're going to have a Tricor, you're going to look to scale, and Liquid, sure, you're not too happy if the game drags out, but you're hitting some of these crazy timings where you're going to want to shut down the map a little bit, take some out of towers, get his first Aegis on the, on the map. And Mickey will be going for a Butterfly next. It's going to be a good one. For the side of Talon, Jabs, of course. Again, if you're just joining us, offlane AM. Uh, we'll be going for Manta himself as he's going to blink out just as Nisha uses the ult. So no connection found. And again, just dodging fight after fight. And it's not just Talon. Liquid has been doing the same on the other side. It's not the easiest for both teams to kind of catch each other, right? You can see that they're playing very well on the map. They're evading moves. And Boxley doesn't have a blink yet, Nisha doesn't have a blink yet. So once those come out, it will help them. But Talon, probably fairly happy with just what's happening on the map, right? Jabs continues to farm top, dodges all the rolls. But here, you've got the 70-minute rolls from Liquid, and it looks like Talon are looking to TP. This is a hard contest for sure, so you're going to have to bust out some really good gameplay here. Yeah, they don't have Pango roll, they know that. But Roche already at half HP, thanks to Zai. I mean, if they surprise them, there's no Mickey here. Yeah, that's true. Power Shot's going to reveal everything. Are they actually going to stay in the pit? Will they commit to Roche? No. They're going to back away. Flesh Golem popped by Ollie. As a Swash, not really going to connect on anything here. As the fight kind of scattered. So both sides just very hesitant to actually commit to anything as Mickey does TP in for a Roche off on Roche number one, which is not that common. Well, so Talon are delaying this fight. 
I would be surprised if Liquid back off here after all of it. Flesh Golden was used. Tombstone was actually on cooldown as well, so... Yeah, I'll and tell now you. Nisha will have ult in five after all yeah. that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's still on Liquid to take back the area and try to take this fight. I do think they are stronger, so let's see how Talon will respond to this one. Smoke from Liquid, trying to find somebody. Just one pickoff might even be enough as Ollie getting slowed by Brian the Boar. Echo Stomp is there, and down he goes to the Black Dragon. Looks like that will be Roche, but I I just love some, some of these plays. Like, even for Talon, this is not a very high percentage play, but there's definitely scenarios where if you catch Liquid slip in there, you can catch him by surprise and maybe take this Roche, but either way, you only lose one guy, Jabs goes straight back to bottom, Makoto goes to mid. They're both happy, and Liquid, they get themselves as Aegis. Roche number one going the way of Liquid. Aegis on Tanisha. And he's got a blink, so I mean, I would assume that that means they're going to want to fight. A lot of times we see the Aghanim Scepter after the defusal uh, for the mid lane Pango, but opting to not do so. So going for the more initiator out utility. Both teams playing on each other's wards. Tanisha. Oh, you steal a token there? All right. Easy token steal. As I do like that you're going for the blink here on Nisha Rada. Like, you have some of the scaling already right now, right? You've got the Beastmaster who's very strong. You have a super fat Medusa as well. It's more on you, like, to really try and catch Talon around the map because they're still incredibly happy. We've talked about their scaling, and it's not really ending. Ollie? Yep, he's spotted and killed very quickly. Not the nicest thing when you play Undying and you just run into some summons and a Beastmaster Roar. Makoto even just using Focus Fire to farm out the Ancients, so it's really showing you the state of the game. You just want to keep farming, get the scale going. Yeah, such a, a change of pace from what we've been used to in this tournament. And I wonder if it has to... Do you think it's more about how deep they are now and how important these games are becoming, as opposed to just the lineups inherently being this way? Because I feel like other than the AM, like we've seen lineups like this before, and the aggression has just been non-stop in a lot of the games. It's both how deep you are in the tournament, but also the nature of the lineups and the fact that you're just playing against some of the best players in the world. Like, Talon tried to go for more aggressive plays, but Liquid dodged it, and same same way, True. kind of the True. other way around. They've been reading each other like a oh, book. Torment. Tormentor at the 20 minute mark, 30 seconds to spare. And Q's gonna get it, so we'll get the Demonic Cleanse, which this game... Mm, lucky shot, it'll take off. It Most will take off quite a few things. Like, it's pretty good. You've got the lucky shot, the fusal slow. If Mickey gets Ags, does it take off stone form? Like, when you use the Mystic? It speed? probably should. And I think also, since SD Purge is a strong dispel, it should take off Hex from Lion, which is pretty damn good. And overall, just having the heal too. Because you have heroes that want to go in and they want to stay in with the AM, with the Monkey, with the Wind Ranger. I like what Liquid are doing, though. Speeding up the pace of the game. You're getting close to Mickey's Butterfly as well. and. Just slowly and but surely gaining more map control. Because Talon's power damage is not really that great. Yeah, I think the Demonic Cleanse is just a basic dispel, so I don't think it's going to do anything to Hex. And then it will not do that. That would be Pretty unbelievably good. open. That would be like a Photic Shield just constantly on you, right? And then a heal after the fact. Butterfly from Medusa. Money so, Mickey. I mean, he's not going... He didn't go Scotty, so I'm actually yeah. very interested in what his next item is going to be because he does have to worry about the AM eventually. I mean, you could just go all out. I could see him go for, like, uh, just straight up damage because if you want to speed up the pace of the game, I think you could do that with just, like, some Chrysalis Silver Edge or straight up Daedalus, but we'll, we'll see what he thinks. Surely he must know better than me, idiot analyst. Maybe. Surely. As another tier 2 just going down. Because sure, on Talon, you've got the scale and you're killing all the creeps, but I think eventually they'll have to think about how to defend the high ground. As their high ground defense, of course, isn't too bad. You've got the SD, yeah, you've got the creep blocks. hitting an entire zoo of units. And there's the fortification. Tier 3 already at half HP. Liquid. Will they stick around? Obviously, the Aegis is there for quite a while on Nisha. BKB is completed on 23. As even Jabs might be... So he's currently queuing up a BKB, so it looks like that all Talon want to do is itemize to win this one fight. And honestly, if you manage to win this one decisively, it puts you in a really good position. Yeah, they place down the Tombstone to slow this down as well. As you can see, Jabs was pushing the top lane, gets his BKB, so I think that is probably go time for Talon. They're going to lose their Tier 3 tower. Their Rax is exposed. Tombstone eventually falls. 
And there's the chopper for 23 Savage. Gets a roar off more. though onto Soul him. Gates. Looking for the Wukong's command. Finally will come out as Nisha going to the back line with the Rolling Thunder, but the disruption will save him. 23 Savage Wolf getting fingered, finger, but he's going to be able to walk away as Boxy goes down to the Focus Fire. Jabs really deep. Gets off his BKB and will not die as a result. So after all that, one kill on a support. But Talon do defend. Well, Talon get to hold. Okay, it looked like it looked a little bit dicey actually. It's 23 in that fight. He did drop kind of low. Jabs went really deep. I, I assume he tried to assassinate Mickey. Uh, he, he he went like mega deep. I think he was under supports at first, and then he was kind of trying to man up on Mickey. But this butterfly, sure, you've got some BKBs to man up, but it's not that easy to hit into Mickey here with a really nice roar from Zai. Even before the Wukongs comes up with a beautiful shackle from Makoto. And you can see Jabs, he's kind of like in the back line here, but his damage isn't the best yet. He, he needs another one, two items here on this anti mate. Yeah, missed 50% of his attacks there <laughs> against Mickey. Unfortunate for him. And back to the farming, although we have a smoke from Talon. Let's see if they're able to find anybody. Perhaps just for wards. 23 doesn't mind going BKB here, as he does need it for the fights, but... I feel like maybe Jabs wanted a little more of his first BKB usage. Or hopefully before the next fight he can squeeze in his own Manta style. Because he will be a menace in this game if he does get to like Manta Scotty or Manta Basher. Oh, I like, thought he had Manta. Okay, so he switched he does not. it up to get the BKB yeah. first. Like they were all inning this defense. Oh, Gleibnir finding Zai. Shackle shot is there. His but BKB's flying out. He gets Demonic Purge as well as Makoto getting beat down by Gilbert the Golem. And here comes the oh, Rolling Gilly. Thunder from Nisha. Not finding any connections yet. It's 23 Savage ready to go on the trees. Looks like they will find the Undying. So Ollie will take a fall. 3k lead for Liquid. Got a lot of big items once again. Zai's got the BKB. You have... Yep, Mickey has got his Dragon Lance. It's gonna help you with some more high grounding early stats. And the Crystal is queued up next. There's a 3k lead on Radiant, but in terms of their strength, I think this is more... Oh. Sania dies randomly. Oh, nice play by 23. Like getting this kill and cutting this wave, right? As Liquid just want to run down mid. Really heads up play. Oh, Zai, you can see he's TPing to the other side. Oh, they scan him They're out. They get a hawk coming out here soon. They get the axes. There's the hex. 23 Savage is too deep. Gets punished for being. Oh, did he pop BKB as well? That looked yes, like it. Yes, he did. Oh, my goodness. All right. Mistakes made from 23 Savage, all to assassinate the position 5 Elder Titan. Well, it looked good until Liquid just kind of have the read that, you know, they want to keep farming, split pushing. He's going to be here, and they do catch him off guard now. 4k lead, and I don't really see what stops it now from going up the high ground. Even if 23 respawns, right? They must have heard the BKB. Damn. Yeah. I do believe they did. Now BKB up for Makoto. As, yeah, I don't see what's stopping them. I mean, they don't have the Aegis, but they can definitely poke. I'm surprised they're not going through the mid lane, though. Well, I guess the summons are going through the mid lane as yeah, Gilbert, Gilbert backing away. He's doing a serviceable job for his masters. 5k lead for Liquid as yeah, now the Monkey King is oh, back. Gilbert. But, oh, boy. That's a full focus fire just for the Golem. Down it goes. 250 gold the way of Makoto. But they know this BKB is down, at least I assume so. Let's we'll see if they try and fight on the Liquid side. I mean, there's a way where you just play the map cleanly here, at least for Liquid. You're going to hawk up Roche and see, you know, the moment it spawns, you're going to force a fight there again. Because your Roche fight is still disgusting. You've got the Bongo Boots on Insania. You've got all the Beast Aurors. And Mickey, even though he's playing into counters, I would say with his item timings and the heroes he has around him, it doesn't matter that he's countered because they need, they need more items on the Dire side. You need MKBs, Manta Styles. Even 23 is queuing up a Diffusal Blade, so they're really going all in to try and win this one fight later in the game. It is a pretty late spawn from Roche. Just under two minutes now. And Talon, they're going to smoke up and try to take a fight, which they haven't been able to take any fight yet. Closest to that was that high ground defense that we just witnessed. It's Mickey. They see Mickey. He's actually alone, but does have teammates in the jungle. Oh, focus fires there. Mickey gets, gets off, off the, the stone, stone gaze. gaze. There's the shackle to connect. 
But now the teammates are able to come by as Jabs is getting off his BKB, but the roar from Zai is going to be used oh. onto Makoto as Boxy getting pursued by Jabs. That's going to be the first here to like out die. Of Make out he of does drop. Wukong's command on the backside. Going to get canceled. Going to use it now. Finally, rolling thunder from Nisha. Not going to be able to connect too much. Gets out the roll up. Trying to kill off Jabs here as 23 Savage doing a ton of damage. They kill off Mickey. They kill off Zai. And that's going to be a buyback onto the Lion as Jabs trying to get more out of it. But this is an AM. They need the Monkey King. They will be able to get Insania as well. So a big fight for Talon. That's four kills and a buyback as they will eventually, or... Uh, Spoke too soon, perhaps. 23. No. Decay is there. Looking for another strike. one. Finding Boxy as well. This is going to be a dieback for him. And just like that, Talon winning this fight handily. They didn't lose anybody. Oh, they actually got they got five kills out of this fight. Now you have the Diffuse Blade on 23. You're getting closer to your next item on Makoto and Jabs. He's also got 3k gold saved up. Like, you could go straight up Manta. You could go into an Abyss Blade if you want to be really sneaky. Nisha is barely going to try to get out. His talent just catching Liquid off guard there. Like, if you just have these few seconds to stick onto Mickey, you've got all the mana burns. Great shackle from Makoto. Yeah, Roche is going to be up in 10 seconds. Will that be enough time for them to take it without Liquid intervening? I guess there's an ET spirit. I do think Talon would love to start Roaching and kind of like set up the area. And Sania getting ready to get to that side of the map. So they will know. for Liquid that this is a late spawn. They will have the Hawk Vision there as well. So Talon, after this last fight, they must feel very good about the fights that are to come, so I would certainly expect him to contest. This will be a Roche off. Q on the other side, the Swash not gonna... not gonna hit anything, and now into the pit, Liquid goes. They have the vision advantage with Astral Spirit, with the Hawks, with everything. And we hear the Rolling Thunder going out. They're trying to take out this AM so that Roar. Medusa Good can disruption. actually do something. Nice disruption for the save, and Jabs gets off his BKB. Now trying to kill off Box, but it has to blink away. Glyphnir onto several heroes. They're going to lose their Shadow Demon to start. Trying to get off the Wukong's command. Oh. It's 23 Savage, but he gets hexed. He gets stunned. So much damage. He doesn't have the damage. He pops his BKB and dies right after again. And now Makoto trying to do as much as he can to Nisha, but he's going to have to run away because they are completely outnumbered. And Jabs, Ooh. oh, they find him, trying to TP out, and he gets destroyed. And Liquid, now that Roche is on the Radiant side, will try to get down there as fast as possible to secure their second Roche. Oh, Boxy carried that fight so nicely. The Hex on 23 before the Wukongs comes out with the late blink on the high ground to also find Jabs on the TP, because this looked good in the start for Talon. Like, Jabs gets out there, you're using all their spells. You could maybe disengage. But Nisha finds Q here on the sideline, and here Boxy coming in clutch to just keep the fight going. And this is the second time 23 Savage pops the BKB with like 50 HP yeah. and then just dies. Very unfortunate for Talon. Very back and forth game as here Boxy mm, yeah, finds him close. with the high ground blink. And this is second Roche into Liquid's hands. They needed this. Yeah, so Aegis again for Mickey. That's your high ground offensive. Woman, <laughs> snake woman, snake lady woman. And the cheese is going to be on Nisha this time. He well, this time being the first because yeah. it is second. That is true. This time around, oh, it could be torment time on the way to the high ground. Is it up? Oh, it is up. that one already. Oh, Make already it did swap his item build to a Lincoln's against this mana void or potential shackles. So we'll They're not going to bother knowing liquid. That is true. I mean, you want to go into this high ground. You're up 5k, you've yeah. got this ages. I don't blame them. And you Hawk have the siege as well. Jab being spotted by the Hawk by Harry the Hawk. That's slightly the out of range. Is uh, yeah, <laughs> it's actually like on the money. Right, man. <laughs> nope. Oh, okay. You're just in the the hitbox line. of Harry is too big. <laughs> hitbox the, the Hawk. That's his name. <laughs> there, the Shackle onto the Black Dragon, which is doing a lot of the damage here to this Tier 3 tower. Pop the Lincolns is Mickey. Still. Feeling very safe at the Aegis. They take the Tier 3 and now focusing on the Barracks. 23 Savage and company definitely want to try to contest this. Oh, Jabs on the back. Jabs is That's already there. Early BKB. Super far back. He gets roared in the BKB form. 23 Savage trying to get that full oh, command, but, but, but he's going to get destroyed again. That's three that make it four as Talon may have just lost game one just like that. This is going to be a second set. Are they going to get two sets at the very least? Probably Megas, if this not just go for Throne. 
I think this is a triple set into poke tier four. So what can Jabs do alone here? He's got no BKB. Even they're just leaving the creeps to finish up the racks. You've got a buyback on your SD, but that's about that's it. That's not gonna be enough. As the illusions will take out the second, and yeah, Liquid are gonna get mega creeps. No fortification in sight for Talon. And it feels like it's just several team fights that 23 Savage just not being able to get off his Wukong's command. And even if he does, he's super low HP and they can just burst him down. I mean, Liquid are pressuring you into these fights, but if you're Talon, you probably would rather try to smoke around and take this fight instead of just fighting from the front, blinking in with your anti-mage. But now, that may have been your last fight of the game. I mean, they are holding for 23. Yeah, they're trying. 10 more seconds. AC online AC for Daedalus. Zai. And yeah, Daedalus for Mickey. This is going to be even harder as the first tier four falls. Mickey and company resetting a bit to get these items in their inventory. But again, Aegis has two and a half minutes. So much time for this second life. They can just keep going. Talon here, ooh, good hex. Yeah, disruption is there. Nisha get us off the rolling thunder. 23 Savage is going to get stunned eventually. Is there the Echo Stomp? Going to connect. They're going to be able to take out Makoto immediately. No way to get back into the game. Stone Gaze doesn't matter. GG's called. And Liquid, in very sudden fashion, just win this game, no, number one. This is what I love about Pro Dota and. Thank you very much. Game number two underway between Liquid and Talon. And we have some juicy picks to oh, talk yeah. about. My goodness. After a very, I want to call it a weird game number one. It was extremely slow. Very much not the case for the rest of the games that we've seen in this tournament. Yep. So kind of an aberration of sorts. This time, I think we're going to see a lot of action as... Let's talk about the bounty rune situation as per norm. Jabs gets Lots stunned. Of gets off the overwhelming odds, trying to take out Insania, but he's the one surrounded, and he's the one that Ooh. will be eventually brought down. Pops a fairy fire, but the first blood will still go to Insania in the end. <laughs> Tried giving it to Mika. I think he missed on the high ground, as Insania will end up taking this first blood. We saw this yesterday from them as well, where they have this darks here. They leave Zai for like the first 30 seconds alone. Foxy helps his team to eventually get this first blood, but we've got ourselves a liquid lone druid that fear darkness, he called it. Fear is actually a god. He's a god. That was, I mean, it's been picked twice in this tournament, so basically not at all. 0-2. <laughs> I don't think Liquid's picked it yet, though. But yeah, what do you think of the lone druid in this game? It's a pretty good pick, and it's one of the timings that if you're liquid, you've got to be looking for it. Lone druid does well in the mid lane against Storm, and you also have Lion and Ench who can easily collapse there. So for Talon, in order to keep their early game intact, they're going to have to look at Makoto to do well on the lane and then also help him defend like this first big move from liquid. And how does this matchup go, the lone druid versus Storm? I may have said it 10 seconds ago, but it is Lone Druid favored. Okay, good to know. Thank you. <laughs> Slightly. Or I would say like some 60-40, maybe even 65-35. But the most important or the scary part is that Liquid have the playability to even help him after he wins the, like, wins the lane. And how does that mid lane go for Storm Spirit? <laughs> 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 all right, just, uh, you know, it's all good. It's all oh, good. Kazoo has to okay, vacuum into the Impale. Ollie hexed and brought down by Zai. So... Good start for Liquid early on, as 23 Savage will be playing the Faceless Void this time. His initiations are going to need to be on point for sure. Yep. Cannot so, have some of the mistakes that we saw from last game. Level 2 timing abuse here from Liquid. One thing that could happen this game for Talon is, like, maybe you get some pressure down here, you bring your IO bottom and you do try to tower dive like Mickey or Insania early on. I think that's one punch back for them in this game around. I would say, like how Talon adapted, just take out the Medusa, take out the Beastmaster. Because at this stage in the tournament, you just want to try to make it easier for yourself. But this early game, I would say, again, Liquid, they've got the tempo. 
And yeah, Talon side, they do have a lot of burst damage, though. Once jabs can get, I mean, we've seen a few uh, Legion Commander games this yep. tournament, and it's been banned a lot. A lot more than I thought it was going to be, in fact. But you have the old dual into Mystic Flare eventually that will delete just about anybody, not named Lone Druid, as long as he's in his true form. It's a lot of pressure from this bottom lane. Like, Drow Ranger does fare pretty damn good against Legion in the lane. You've got this double range, which is just annoying, because LC is a very snowball heavy hero by nature. You want to do well in your lane, keep kind of going forward, try to slowly take the tier one. And what do you think of the IO pick this game? It's not, I mean, there's obviously the IO storm to provide mana, but yeah. typically there's a carry that makes good use of it. I would say Faceless Void is not exactly the prototypical combo. Honestly, I think it was hard for them to pick a support at that point. There were like five or six supports banned at the time. So I think IO was probably one of their better picks. It could allow them to help you play the map, but most importantly, if you like get a little bit of tempo on Makoto or Jams, you can try to play through that. Mm -hmm. Like they need to find some early timings later with the IO to just tether through and help a core. And Liquid's push, just in general, looks insanely good it's once nasty. it gets online, especially yeah. with this Drow, which I think took you off guard in terms of it being picked. What do you think about that hero in this game? Mm, I mean, it's more that they're, they're going to have to be playing on timings and I think helping your team out, because overall they have a lot of jump on Talon later if they get there. Like if the game is even as boxy with a TP here to go against Makoto. Yeah, we'll get the Impale. Rune is secure from Makoto. Wow. Will it cost him his life, though? Insania, one impetus does not miss. Down goes Makoto. That is a huge kill for Liquid and for Nisha in that mid lane. Is Q getting slowed down? Multi shot is there from Mickey to finish him off and now Jabs. Careful. He's surrounded by two heroes from Liquid along with a Centaur that cannot be underestimated. Mickey's all Jabs in. attempting to TP out. Do they have the damage? Ooh, very close call. Will get out. That would have been. Atrocious actually goes to the tier one, so it's still gonna need some major regen. That's still very costly for him as he has to expand his TP tangles and salve. So pretty much 300 gold in order to get out there. But Boxy, he's just been doing a lot of good work in some of these games. The first blood early, the heads up TP against Makoto, now going mid and also dewarding this mid high ground ward, applying even more pressure on this Makoto Storm. And he's already losing this matchup. Amnesia, yeah, level five, so Level advantage on the side of Liquid in the mid lane. You can see Boxy in the trees looking for a potential opening before Makoto hits level six. He's not even remotely close because he just hits level five there. The fact that he's here this early, one minute before the power room. Yeah. I mean, this <laughs> I've said it before, but Boxy is giving me major Jerex vibes from how he's moving in the early game. He's so free. He's always in the right place at the right time. And they know where to play through. They de the mid ward. They've got their own lane ward beyond the tier one now. And Zai is pretty much A-OK -okay this 1v2 top. Like, it's just a, it's a faceless void IO, not the most pressure. Insane at the bottom. Does take quite a bit of damage. Jabs, not in the airy to be able to get off the overall odds. Here. Boxy there with a beautiful impale onto two. Q is dead, and Jabs likely will be next. Oh, he's going to get linked up by Ollie, though, making his transition over through that gate, but it's still too much damage as Mickey will secure another kill, and now the Impale onto Ollie. Things are just falling apart early game here for Talon, and another kill will go the way of Liquid. Double kill for Mickey. My goodness, this, I was not expecting a start this good for the Liquid side. But this is some open AI gameplay <laughs> currently. You leave your Zai up top, who now has a Vanguard, so he's A-OK. -okay. There's gonna be a lot more pressure coming through now from both your safe lane and the mid lane. It's Nisha, level six, shield rune. We've got the bear with high levels, so Makoto's tower, probably gonna get slowly whittled away, but perhaps they will look to play through him. I mean, Makoto did a good job. The fact that he did get level six at an equal timing, yeah. very big for Talon. Highest amount of assists at six minutes. I mean, he's been everywhere. He has. Been top, mid, bottom, bottom again, mid again, bottom again, now back to top. Zai getting free farm despite there being two members of Talon here. They're not really able to do much. Boxy will likely just sit for that wisdom rune to make sure that there's no stealing shenanigans. That's one way that Talon could try to get back in this game. But we can see on the minimap they're not really making their way over there at all. Talon need minute 10. I think like you need more levels like you're gonna need some sky ref old come out which is generally gonna be like minute nine minute ten so the wisdom rune is definitely important and this is why lone root is so annoying in storm you can't really gank the lone that easily and if you ever leave the lane of storm your tower just gets chopped down yeah we're seeing that right now already at half hp for that tier one okay what's the itemization from lone druid in these days like 
Mask of Madness, something like that on the bear. It's just Mom Desolator, right? I think you just Mom Deso, you pace up the game. Then AC or something like that. Something like that just sounds good to me. Basher, of course. Classic. Yeah. Makoto is level six now. We can see Boxy. Good deep Relatively by Relatively close by to try to get off an Impale or Hex. I mean, they can just take this tower without any commit. Yeah. There's the Bear and a Tomato working together to damage this tower. Even Zai makes his way over, so maybe trying to force a lot of mana usage on this Storm to get away, and Zai coming in from the backstab situation. Good Makoto silence. zips to the other side. All he's going to connect as well. 23 Savage with an early Chrono onto three. Do they have the damage to take out Zai? Oh. There's a back wall to follow, though. They do lose their Darkseer, and Talon able to disengage, so Liquid losing a valuable member. They will likely get the Tier 1 anyway, but not exactly the way that they draw, drew that up. Uh, good, good rotation from 23 and Talon there. You were going to lose this tower. So getting a Chrono out and getting like a turn kill on Zai, which honestly, I thought it was going to be way harder for them to kill him. So good kind of punch back, but still got a laning issue here. This liquid Mickey Drow Ranger. He's just pumping all these arrows into jabs. All right, I think the question that everyone is wondering in chat right now, is this a good Glacier game? <laughs> 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 yes. Okay. You will see it, of course, with the Tormentor being taken. <laughs> That's well, funny. You need like four Tormentors to get that, I think. And then Sania now making his way to the top lane along with Mick A. C23 Savage forced out completely. No Not quite finished with his Mask of Madness yet. No TP yet as Liquid. Very similar to game one. They're going to be the ones to pace up the game here. And Talon don't really have any way of stopping them. Their D push is non-existent. Like Legion Commander doesn't have a long range Q anymore. It's only around yourself. So what is really going to be stopping Liquid here to just run down on the map? Stupendous. And Zion taking some stacks here. 23 Savage will just have to TP out. So wasting a lot of time. And you're right. In terms of like defensive capability, they don't have a whole lot. I mean, for them, I think the best defense would be offense yes. with the likes of Jazz once he picks up his eventual Blink Dagger. Yeah, Talon need to play an open map, try to push as, as many lanes as possible, and look for pickoffs later with Storm Zip into the Mystic Flare. Like, try and get some kills that way, and play the map with this Relocate. Because there is no 5v5 fighting into Liquid. It is not possible. You need to catch him off guard and delay this game. Yeah, I mean, it's already a 4k lead for Liquid. We're seeing that Jabs actually builds his Blade Mail first. So yep. delaying the Blink Dagger. So that will likely delay any action coming from Talon. They can still smoke through Makoto. So him getting this DD rune is very big with the current state of the map. Looks like Liquid want to go down bottom or at least help Nisha a little bit. So. Breaking some smokes around the map, while Boxy is going to be able to sap some experience in the mid lane. I could see Talon go for a smoke after Q gets his level 6 here on the Sky Ref up top. Yeah, the Mystic Flare is going to be it's pretty needed. vital for them to actually get a kill. They go without it for now with the DD, but if Nisha just pops R, he will not be dying to these three heroes, I think, unless 23 maybe reinforces very early on. Yeah, Bear right now has Phase Boots, Mask of that. Madness. As Insania gets Boxy's caught by here. the storm, but the instant hex from Boxy's there into the impale. Can they get the root? No. Makoto zips away. Now they relocate. It looks like Ollie will have to pay the price. Well, he does have a link in jabs, but Boxy is there to counteract it. Impale. And the death for the IO. Now a tier one tower will be focused by Liquid and likely taken for free. Well, next tower on the map as while they're taking the tower, even pushing out 23 from his own triangle. I, mean, I guess it ain't his own anymore. Gonna go back up to a 6k gold lead. I mean, the name of the game for Liquid. Take all these out of towers, minute 15, Dire Roche, very likely on the deck. You get the Deso and you go for tier yeah. twos. Yeah, he's only one mithril hammer away from that Deso on the bear. That thing is looking quite scary indeed. Even and if you like you said, the, the Roche can come pretty early yeah. as well. Like, they can get every objective, including the Tormentor, if they want. But of course, we know that Liquid do not. So don't ask about the Tormentor again, because they stop okay. bringing it up. I'll bring it up. Five minutes. <laughs> That's jab. Yeah, you've just... Okay, so he's got the Blade Man to, what, help him form some of these Ancients? But even if Mickey is just around, if they jump My Nisha... Goodness, he can't even, uh, can't even take this. Oh, he's going to have to keep pulling them out and around. 
Tormentor, not available. <laughs> <laughs> Walking over the, the corpse of the Tormentor from the last they game. They see Mike on this war, but how do you ever make a move? Like, you need... Makoto needs to be smoked with Q at some point if they do find an opening, and then Ollie like, comes in with a relocate. Until then, all Talon can do, play an open map and try to get to this late game. Or even just later stages of the game. There's also a pipe going to be coming out on Darks here, so... You cannot fight into this liquid ball. Yeah, absolutely not. And what exactly... Oh man, this blink is just... I feel like it's so needed on jabs. He just hasn't been able to find the farm so far this game. He's bottom net worth of all the cores. Yeah, if he can try to slowly get there, as of course he's... Yeah, not really the closest, but as long as the game is staying like this, they're doing okay. But uh, we've seen this in game one. Game slows down a little bit from like, what, minute 12 to 15. But then you get some of these major items. You get this death on the bear. And this game will ramp up very quickly. Indeed. And Sania getting close to finishing his four staff for the eventual Hurricane Pike. Which we've talked about this before, but oh, Chronosphere from Relocate. 23 Savage. There's the Mystic Flare. First of the game, I do believe, relocate a bit late. They lose their Lion from the Liquid side. Oh, Talon will take that. Like, sure, Chronos down. Maybe that helps you like be more confident about taking Roche, but Talon Honestly, there's no fighting into them anyway, so you might as well just expand your chrono to get some of these kills. Insania. I mean, with Relocate being down, is that... I mean, how big of a spell is that for Liquid to even care about at this I point? I actually think Liquid don't care. No. Like, they know that at this point, Talon can't really find them, as Insania may have overstepped his welcome. Yeah, gonna get stunned up. Mark of Courage. Still pretty damn... <laughs> <laughs> Every game, you have to mention it. Of course. Uh, I mean, that's one of the values of the Spark deer. Of You're super tanky, do a ton of damage. 23 Savage getting forced out again. This is a bit annoying. Only three levels in a time walk as Nisha will continue to chase perhaps a little bit here. Forced to pop the mana. Yeah, Boxy's going to be spotted by Makoto, who doesn't have a whole lot of mana to work with, but will be enough with that Mystic Flare from Q. So able to find a couple kills now onto Boxy, who's been a thorn in their side from the beginning of this game. Well, Talon doing some good stuff on the map, and also, like, we kept talking about Jabs' blink earlier. He's getting closer now. As you know, he's just getting to chill bottom all the time. Looks like Boxy wants his team to kind of speed it up, as he's drawing this arrow up to top, like, three to four times now. The Deso is about to come out on Nisha as well, and I don't blame him. Talon have no way of fighting you head on. Yeah. Phylactery on Q, by the way. More da -da -da damage. Cool. Love that. Makes Ancient Seal do damage and this slow. Could be, this could be cool for Talon. They know it's hard to defend the top tier too, but they're waiting on the mid lane to see if someone will show. But Mickey with some yeah. very good patience. Yeah, one gust on to make a could spell Doom, Ooh. but Ollie's there to link him up. Multi shot. Got to get do a decent amount of damage. There's a relocate coming out. So Makoto will be safe and. This gank not successful from the Talon's side. And there's the blink. That is what we've been waiting for for Jabs. And I feel like they have to get good value out of this item. Yep, we've got the blink blade mail, of course, with the Mystic Flare follow-up. But they still need to be careful about how you jump in. Like, let's say you jump in a bit too much. There comes the pipe aura, some vacuum wall, and you just get clamped down by this Deso Bear. Still not the easiest task. They are smoking up, though. Yep, Talon are on the way. I don't think they're going to make it, though. This bear. Remember that Mask of Madness? Uh, maybe they will. I think they'll make it. And they okay, are quite though. low on some of these heroes. Yeah, he goes into the pit as well. It's going to speed it up. 23, 23 Savage has his Chronosphere. This is a really important fight. And Sadie gets spotted first, though. But there's the Gust on the no 23 time Savage time with walk. the wall as well. 23 Savage gets vacuumed in and dies. And just like that, Talon will have to concede the Roche. Now, Jabs. Linked up by Ollie, will be able to get out. So only one kill, but it's the probably the most important one that Liquid can find, and that back, should be a freebie. Back to pushing lanes here for Talon, as Insania came up for pretty nice and clutch timing on the gate and just finds 23 Savage. There's definitely room for failure there, but it's going to be an easy rush at the end of it all. Anisha will take it. Do you know what line Boxy just drew? No. Bottom into the Tormentor. Yeah, we'll see. I'll believe it when I see it. It's three <laughs> minutes away. Agnus Scepter online for Mickey. 
So has that hypothermia, which is really good this game against the Legion Commander, against it's the IO. Really good. Yeah. Lowering all that regen. Will rebuy his Dragonlands later. Also definitely hoping to pick up a Grove Bow as Philosopher Stone on Lone Druid. Very happy about that one. Yep, true. Probably the only core in the game that benefits as much. Maybe yeah. Enigma. Yeah, no doubt. Remember back in the day when this was the worst Aegis carrier in the game, the Lone Druid. The bear no would more. die with you. No longer, though. It's a separate entity as Insania spotted out. Gets off his heel. I think they need Q for this, right? Yeah, there's a TP coming in, in the form of Boxy. Mickey's here Silence. as well. Gust onto just the storm. They'll have to look for the Get reload. The impale. Ollie does have his ult available. Uses it a little too late, though, so Makoto just drops casually. It's going to be a follow kill, and in the meantime, look at the big bad bear. Yeah, he already took the tier two. And now we'll be able to poke at the high ground if they want. I'll go for the eventual Tormentor in two minutes. That will continue to mention for no reason. Impale, Gust, another kill the way of Liquid. They are stomping in game number two. This is nothing like their last matchup that went three games, super epic. It has been all liquid all day today. 6k building damage at 18 minutes. I mean, he's just going to keep racking up records because what is going to stop him from hitting these towers? He's even got the draw aura for his main hero to hit, which it doesn't matter that much, but just adding more insult. Injury to insult. I don't know how this saying goes, but yep. you know Something what I mean. like that, yeah. <laughs> you injured your insulter, I think is what you're trying to say. Crimson exactly. Guard now up and running. That's going to make it even more difficult for Jabs to get a kill with a duel. Pipe I mean, have we seen a duel this game? Literally, has he cast a spell no, once? he has not. And now the tier three is starting to get pounded on by Liquid, already at half HP. My goodness, they push so fast. You can see the pings coming out on Mickey. That's who they want to try to kill, but the bear is the real problem. There's the big Chronos here from 23 Savage with the Mystic Flare, but Pipe, it's not going to be enough damage. Crimson Guard comes out now, big back wall onto basically everybody from Talon. The Gust to fall. The There's the duel onto Mickey. Does he have enough damage? Oh! Yes, with the right click from Makoto, who's now completely out of mana, trying to walk it off, but now the bears, well, it's going to actually completely ignore them. That's what you're supposed to do in the wilderness as well. Ignore the bear. Let it hit the buildings instead. In real life, that's usually trash cans. This time around, <laughs> it's the melee racks, though. Much more important. And have... just like that, Liquid going to get a full set. I mean, Talon have no more tempo now in, in their spells. You have to expend all of your spells to... They didn't even cut through any of Liquid at the start against the Pipe and Crimson. And Nisha is just going to go for next racks. That's right. Another tier three. They're going to back away for a bit. They, What time is it, Keza? Torment time. That's right. It's Tormentor time if they want. Or they could try to get another kill. Makoto doing what he's done so well throughout this tournament, trying to push the lanes. Delay, delay, delay. They've had several comebacks because of this tactic. But Liquid, they've done their scouting. They've played against it. <laughs> 80 seconds on the Chrono. Like you, your spells are not ready for this. It could be Torment time. Or it could be high ground time. <laughs> It's never torment time for Liquid. It's high ground time, baby. That's right. They got their pine cone ready to go to set up with the bear. Very familiar sight for him in the wilderness. And the tier three tower it's is going to drop. And now the second set of racks in peril as Talon trying to backstab with two members from behind. But the flank is going to be too late, even if they get several kills. They're flanking They've the creep wave. two sets of racks. Maybe they're trying to flank their own tormentor. No. They are just killing the creeps, and now it's torment time. Liquid looking to steal the most important objective on the map. Who's going to get the Little shard? Fun. It's worthless. Jesus, of all the shards. <laughs> God. <laughs> he can get a second creep to end the game. It's not actually that bad. I, I'm just kidding. It's actually OK. Oh, OK, it's just fake It's hype. just not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fake. That's my job. Fake Boxy. hype. Boxy. Ooh. Nice impale into the gust. Oh. Ollie with his ult, though. We'll Ollie be able to get him you. out. Not in time. It gets canceled. Ollie is dead as well. Oh, boy. In come the little friends. <laughs> Shard on Nisha now as well. More. Just you can get the dispels off. More movement speed. More attack speed. Uh, yeah, I don't know. 23 Savage. Age is expiring soon. 10 seconds. Oop. Yes. And now you're dead. Q getting run down by the bear. Gets, oh, there's oh, the phylactery. Slow, Will that cool. save his life? Nope. Absolutely not. He's dead. 15k lead for Liquid, looking for Mega Creeps. They don't have their Aegis any longer, but considering the amount of damage that they've taken in these fights, I don't think they care. 
This Lone Druid is untouchable. Lone Druid is missing. I think they want to try to burst him out. 23 Savage uh, looking for is. a Sidewinder play with the Chrono, but again, their damage has been lacking. There's initiation from Jeb, the zip in from a on the back line. He's going to get controlled. Do they have the damage? No, the more damage onto the Legion than anything. He's dead, buys back instantly, but the Gust on the 23 Savage, he's done as well. No buyback for him, and now the Bash on the Makoto. The press of the attack is too late. And that is another death for the mid laner of Talon as their hopes and dreams are crumbling in this game number two. As Liquid look to be taking Mega Creeps with ease. It's 20 to 4 for God's sake. They have they have too much. You've got all the auras, Drow Ranger, Solar Crest. Nisha's just going to town on these buildings. Tier 4's only thing remaining for Talon, along with these other worthless buildings, as GG's come out. Talon eliminated, and Liquid will get a rematch against Team Spirit, but this time it'll be in a best of five grand finals. Wow, Liquid really showing up today. They just want this rematch against Spirit, as this game didn't. There was no chance for Talon at all. I, credit to Fear for picking Lone.